So if we do the Fibonacci of four, for example, using the formula, everybody let's pay attention here. Using the Fibonacci formula, if I'm looking for the Fibonacci of four, what am I doing? Before, yeah, four minus two, for, well, four minus one first would be Fibonacci of three. And what's the other one? It would be two, in your case, Fibonacci of two here, because n minus two. Stop me. If, Uh, it's one of the things like you have to draw the thing out because so this would be two, right? What's the Fibonacci of three? What's the left side? Uh, BNB needle? So Fibonacci of two, right? And Fibonacci of one. And Fibonacci of two, we don't even have to do it because we know what value it returns, right? What value does it return? One. What value does one return? One. one. What value does two return? One. one. What value, well, let's stop here. What do we have to do with the values? Add them up. So one and one. I mean, I'm not trying to quiz us here. But um, <laughs> one and one is two, right? And what are we doing with those two values now? Adding them up, right? So two and one, three. So that's what our function does. The same thing we just did, our function does the same thing. When it comes to some base case, it returns one, for example, and then we add that as we return to the call, to, in our case, us. Everybody? Let's do our next example, and then we'll... No. Yes. We, we don't know the numbers at all. Yeah, we don't know the numbers. We just plug in the formula. Yes, because if you want to test it, that's what we'll do. Let's see. Let's try to be brave here. Let's do, let's do six, and then we'll stop. Um, is that class notes here? For your own practice, you could do it along with us so you could know what's happening. Uh, take this out. Uh, put this up here. We said six, right? Yeah. Okay, so fib of six. What does fib of six call? Fib of five. And fib of? I had three and four. Okay. All right. What does five call? Five calls. Majed, what does five call? Yeah, like, stop us, because that's one of the things. Like, if, once we start going that train, recursion is everywhere in data structures. And understanding what it does is, like, important to trace back where you want to go. So let's start again. Okay, we said the formula, the formula is right here. We said the formula for Fibonacci is n minus 1 plus n minus 2. What does that mean? You, if you say you're looking for the Fibonacci of 6, you need to find out what the Fibonacci of five is and what the Fibonacci of four is and then add them together. It's a formula, right? Um, right now, just keep in mind, just use the formula and plug in the numbers. So what does that mean? What does N mean? N here is six. So if we say N minus one, what is six? What is N minus, what is six minus one? Five. So that takes us to the left side here. So that would be fib of five. Using the same formula, what would be the right side? What would be n minus two? Four. So that would be fib of four. Okay, let's keep going here. What is the left side of fib five? Four and three. Not yet? Sorry. Uh, what is the left side of fib five? Four and three. So this is fib four, and this is three and let's do four three and two cool um, and then uh, Shania what would be fib of four fib three and fib two right 
and we could break up three here. So we could break up three, we could break up three here. So three would be two and one, fib would be two and one. Okay, let's plug in our numbers. So what's fib of two? What does it return, Cassandra? On the left side, left, leftmost bottom, one, right? And one returns one, correct? Okay, so one plus one is two here. Yes, so far so good. What is fib two? Two plus one, three. Okay, down here we have one plus one is two for this guy. Why don't we break down that three here? Uh, that three here should be fib two and fib one. And here we have one plus one is two. Right? And Mr. One, what does fib two return here on the right side, right bottom tree? One. And one plus one, we agreed is three here. So far, so good? Okay, so we have two plus two is three here. We have three plus two here is five for this guy. And now we have five plus three is eight. Cool? Yes? All right, so that's like, right? That's what the computer does, but it takes us a longer time. But imagine put fib of 100 in there. Your computer might actually crash. Um, if we do not use dynamic programming, your computer will crash. That's a good segue. What have we noticed here so far? What can we make more efficient? As developers, using the dry principle, everybody remember what dry is, right? Do not repeat yourself. We, but on the diagram itself, like what's happening? How can we, what, what could be optimized? Or what are we doing? we could do better. Repeating, we are repeating Fibonacci sequences. Let's use a color here, distinctive color, uh, blue. So we're repeating a lot of things. One is being repeated a lot, right? Two is being repeated, a lot of repeat. So we'll use, we'll create, we'll write this formula out, we'll write the function as we've written it right now but you could optimize it by using dynamic pro programming and memoization. So dynamic programming and memoization. Basically, yeah. Basically, memoization is caching. Caching the results of factorial will significantly decrease the amount of calls. Um, sorry, not factorial. Um, caching the results of Fibonacci will significantly decrease the amount of calls you make. Here, we're only doing um, Fibonacci of six. Can you imagine Fibonacci of 100 or 20? There'll be a lot of repeated code or a lot of repeated calls. So using memoization, you could decrease that significantly, right? It could go from 6,000 to 20, if you're doing like Fibonacci of 20, for example. Right, yes sir? Yeah, that'd be very expensive on the, for example, playgrounds would probably crash, like if we do 20 or 50 or any number like that. Uh, because it's just like every call is on the stack, remember? Every one of those things we drew out will be on that call stack, right? Uh, if it's cached already before we call factorial, or keep saying factorial. If it's cached already before we call Fibonacci, we'll just look it up. If it already is called, just return that number. So that's memoization. As I said, we won't actually do it now. It's in the lecture. So we'll do the, the basic factorial formula. But keep in mind, if you are doing some sort of like code, re or code challenge or whatever, you want to really use memoization. You want to have like a dictionary that saves the results of the factorial. The code is in the lecture. 
But right now I'm telling us what the theory is. The code is just looking at what the code looks like. Everybody with me? But memoization is very, very efficient. And if you have something like, fact, like uh, Fibonacci here, where you have so many different calls being done repeatedly, use memoization before you submit that code. Everybody? You create some dictionary. In that case, it would be a dictionary of ints here. And then you cache or you store or you save the factorial. And you look it up first. If let this um, Fibonacci exist, use it, just return it. If not, go ahead and perform the operation, okay? Okay, so any questions about um, dynamic programming or, dynamic pro programming basically encapsulates recursion and um, memoization or recursion and, yeah, recursion and memoization together makes dynamic programming dynamic programming. So let me actually say recursion plus memoization equal to dynamic programming. Cool. The lecture has, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes, yes. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna actually quote out the, fact, the Fibonacci because it's in the lecture. But please, um, I'll give you guys a problem to work on tomorrow, around the same time block. You'll have to work with your partner to basically um, code out the, the problem we have. It, the solution is there already, but now the problem is different. The problem is gonna be different, and the problem will be... So this will be the problem, right? I'll stack out some more resources as to what Tribonacci means. Um, but tomorrow during the afternoon, you'll come up with your partner and then you'll solve this problem and you'll post it to you. And um, a hint, to really solve that problem, you have to use dynamic programming because you'll exceed your time limit, okay? Yes? Any questions? Any questions? This is you probably in there. So as I said to review, in the lesson we have the Fibonacci, where is it? There's the recursive Fibonacci. This is without dynamic programming. Nothing is cached, nothing is saved. It will do every call it needs to do. It will repeat calls. But when we go down to dynamic programming, which I just introduced us to, say what it is, theoretically. This is the solution using dynamic programming. Here we use a dictionary. We, store the, we first look up the value. Did we already perform that Fibonacci? If yes, simply return the result. We still use our base case here. And if we did not, if we come down here, that means we did not perform it yet. We go ahead, we perform it, and we store it in the dictionary. That's it. Okay? So using that principle, we'll be able to solve the Tribonacci problem. You had a question? It's a dictionary, right? You, see, you look up the result. Like, do I have um, three as a result already? Have I seen that already? Because, right, there's only one instance of three being returned. Yeah, they're all ints. They're all ints. Yes? You could put that in the class, like right in the, what was that your question? Go ahead. Would you make a link code account? It's up to you if you want to be discreet or not there. Up to you. Maybe Aaron is probably trolling you. Okay. It's up to you. Feel free to use whatever username. <laughs> now, feel free to use whatever username. Yeah. Impl I never heard an employer looking at somebody's lead code account. Okay. Everybody with me? Right? I never heard of an employer like looking at somebody's lead code. Like, send me your lead code. Uh, yeah. I haven't come across that yet. Aaron, have you come across that yet? Um, GitHub, GitHub. GitHub. Lead code is can you solve this problem? 
Social media, that's something else, right? You, you, you post good things on social media, yes? There's nothing to worry about, correct? <laughs> <laughs> nothing to worry about there. It's all family friendly, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're good. But they do check, yeah. yes. Yeah. They check those things. The, the LinkedIn and all that stuff, they check that. But do they tell you, do they ask you for your lead code account, your hacker rank account? No. Cool? Yes. In that code here, we uh, store it right here. That would be like storing it. That would be step here and here. You look it up, is it in cache? If it's not in cache, store it in cache or memoize. Those are the two places. Storing. The dictionary part of it is the memoization part of it. Store the values so that you don't have to do that same problem over and over again. Because as you see it in our diagram here, we were doing the thing multiple times. And that's only Fibonacci 6. If you have to do like Fibonacci 10, forget about it. Right? Like all those values would get repeated. 5 would get repeated, 3 would get repeated more than that. Um, cool? Good? OK, so this was our introduction to recursion. Recursion will be with you throughout your career and throughout data structures. As we get deeper into um, data structures, you will see more recursion in there. Right? So that's like one of the things. Whatever we did today, go over it again, draw it up, especially the factorial one, draw it again and see what, hap what happens. Like how many times does the call happen and how does the value get returned? That's the important part of recursion, the returning part of it, right? Because a function, if it returns, it returns something, it returns back to the person who called it. And the person who called it could perform some operation. In our case, with factorial, they were performing an operation. What operation were they performing? N was multiplying the result. Whatever the result was, was getting multiplied by N. Okay? All right, cool.